going out game review. Adventure games have made a pretty big resurgence in recent years thanks to branching storylines and modern presentation values. But supermassive games found a seldom used resource. The horror movie genre seems like it could be the perfect setting for an adventure game if done right. After playing Until Dawn, well, I'd say Supermassive did it right. With interesting characters, decisions with meaningful consequences, and horror movie references at every turn, Until Dawn really makes you feel like you're playing a horror movie. The game's prologue has its cast of eight teenage characters, played by people well into adulthood, not unlike horror movies all hanging out in a huge, decked-out cabin in the snowy mountains. One that belongs to the wealthy parents of Josh, Hannah, and Beth. Hannah has a crush on Mike that everybody knows about. They prank her into thinking that Mike likes her back. It's a mean trick. Hannah feels hurt, runs out into the woods. Beth chases her. Tragedy strikes. Pretty standard for what you'd expect from a horror movie. Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. Hey, this all got out of just camp, a stupid prank. Uh, oh, damn. You guys... Whoa. Jerks. That was a you prank. Hannah! Oh my god! But this whole beginning sequence does a great job of setting the dark tone of the game, as well as introducing the gameplay mechanics. Until Dawn invests heavily on the concept of the butterfly effect, to say the least. Their actions will shape how the story unfolds. They oh. couldn't be the kind of delivering this oh. one with a hammer. Because of this, mundane tasks like choosing conversation options or getting QTEs right feel like they have much more weight to them here. That's because the decisions that you make have lasting consequences. One of Supermassive Games' best decisions was to do away completely with any game-ending scenarios. Progression doesn't count on you doing things correctly. If you screw up, the game continues anyway. And that doesn't mean that the consequences for failing are less impactful. They're massive. In most games, the death of a character usually means you get a big game over screen and an option to load a saved game or continue from a checkpoint. Until Dawn just keeps trucking along with the story just not containing that character anymore. You've got to live with that error for the rest of the game. So yeah, those conversations in QTEs are suddenly a lot more tense. Oh my god, jump. He'll find you. Yeah, he will. Well, at least he's like lumbering. Oh sh I missed it. Oh no. If someone dies, it's your fault. It's possible to get all the way through the game without getting any of these characters killed. But conversely, every character also does have a chance to be killed. But to get by with everyone alive, you'll have to be dead on accurate on almost every QTE, find virtually every collectible in the game world, and also get a little bit lucky. I say that because some of the decisions don't always have predictable or logical outcomes. In one situation, I was controlling the character of Emily while she was exploring a radio tower with her boyfriend Matt attempting to call for help. While looking around, I found a flare gun, and then I was presented with the choice of either giving it to Matt or keeping it for myself. Assuming it would be best in the hands of the person most likely to survive, I gave it to Matt, who was her athletic boyfriend. Matt proceeded to pull it out and fire it off instantly. He looks like he's like an athlete, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Whoa, 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 you're doing it right now? Attention. You did it before using the radio? No psychopath. I did not know he was going to yeah. use it just then. I didn't either. That might have changed my mind. If I had known he was going to fire it, I wouldn't have given him the gun, and that outcome contributed to the death of a character. The game being based entirely on the butterfly effect, in which a seemingly inconsequential occurrence can trigger a chain of events with devastating outcomes, it stands the reason that something as simple as handing a character an object could have totally unpredictable and terrible results. From a gameplay perspective though, attaching such strong consequences to fleeting this or that moments can be a little frustrating. The most viscerally effective gameplay mechanic is the don't move sequence. At certain times throughout the game, a character will hide and you're tasked with staying extremely still to avoid being caught. As a PlayStation 4 exclusive game, Until Dawn uses the controller's motion sensor to detect any slight movement, and I mean slight. I found that simply the act of taking a slow breath was enough to trip it and I would lose the sequence. So every time I became faced with a don't move prompt, I literally held my breath until it was over. Oh my god. God, please don't come this way. Crap, crap, crap. Oh, oh. <sighs> oh, shit. 
Oh crap. It added so much tension and anxiety to the often already scary moments. It's crazy feeling like any subtle movement could get a character killed. It didn't take long for other players to figure out that you could just sit the controller on a desk or a table so that it wouldn't move, but come on, that takes all the fun out of it. There's a legitimate thrill out of holding the controller and trying to stay as still as possible. But when you're not participating in these gameplay events, or just simply walking your character from one area to the next, you're going to spend most of your time watching until dawn. It reminds me of Quantic Dream games like Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, in that it's mostly unplayable scenes with some occasional gameplay elements. But Until Dawn trumps these games with a more cohesive and engaging storyline, along with characters that are far more interesting and relatable. Here it goes. Okay, S. I. S. T. E. R. Sister. Sister? Whose sister? Oh, come on, is this for real? Shut up! Ask it whose sister. Horror movies get maybe an hour and a half or two to develop some characters, while Until Dawn had a 9 or 10 hour playthrough to really dig into them. They're quite well acted too, with plenty of recognizable faces thanks to the incredible facial animation. Hayden Panettiere tops that list with leading roles in TV shows like Heroes and Nashville on her resume. You might have seen Rami Malek in Night at the Museum or Mr. Robot. Brett Dalton is one of the main characters in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's not a weak actor in the group, and their TV and film backgrounds definitely show in their Until Dawn performances. With the game being so dependent on getting the player engaged in the story, a bad acting job could ruin a scene, no matter how important it might be. With experienced actors playing the main roles, Until Dawn avoids that problem, and it made it so that I didn't really mind that most of the game consisted of watching it. You know, get everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. When the credits rolled on this one, my immediate feeling was that I had to go back and fix some of the errors I made that killed so many characters. And because you can do just that, there's plenty of replay value here. Anyone I've talked to that's played it has their own story about what happened, which is a great sign that the branching storylines actually result in meaningful consequences. Whether you enjoy horror movies or not, or if horror games are your thing or not, until Dawn is still a game that everybody should try. It does a lot of things right in the modern adventure genre, and the things that it gets wrong don't do enough to sully the experience. Lissy and I were hooked all the way to the end, and we've continued to talk about it well after. Here's hoping that this game finds success in the market, because I really want Supermassive Games to follow this up with another one like it. Play this game. Here's what some of our viewers had to say when we finished our playthrough. Jonathan King said, I think this has to be one of the best games I've ever seen you play. Beautiful graphics, great twisting story, nice horror homages, with characters you actually care about. Tim 73 thinks that this is the best AAA horror title we've seen in a while. And his review would basically be, this makes me want to actually buy a PS4. Subzero2525 said, Oh guys, lol, I feel so bad for the ending that you got. Jeez, this game sure knows how to rub salt in the wounds. Click here or in the description for our full playthrough to see how things ended up for us. But overall, you seem to like this game just as much as we did. Thanks for watching this review. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe for new videos every day. But for now, we'll see you next time. Well, we're out of time. Let's talk again soon. Fire might have been his fault, right? Yeah. Or maybe? Because he said, like, it cannot be undone. I don't know, I guess that was obviously a reference to that letter. Yeah.